everyone in this lecture we're going to continue on our path and study some more nonlinear systems let us begin by considering what uh, is called as the manta ray system and the reason it's called as the manta ray system because eventually the face portrait does resemble the sea animal which is called as a manta ray and the equation which describes this is x dot is equal to y minus y cube y dot is equal to minus x minus y squared okay so first things first what is what are the fixed points so obviously the origin is a fixed point so 0 comma 0 and we can see that at the fixed point x dot and y dot will be 0 and so y times 1 minus y square will be equal to 0 it implies y equal to plus minus 1 and if y is equal to plus minus 1 x will be equal to minus y square and so the other two fixed points are minus 1 comma 1 and minus 1 comma minus 1 so we can already start making the face space um, this is the x-axis this is the y-axis so this is one fixed point of this flow and the other fixed point is this and this. Now let us uh, apply linearization and see what behavior we expect at the fixed points. Okay, so the Jacobian of this particular um, set of equations will be 0, 1 minus 3y square. This will be minus 1 and this will be minus 2y okay so at the origin the Jacobian will be 0 1 minus 1 and minus 2 up this will be 0 we've already encountered such kinds of Jacobian and it's quite obvious that this Jacobian will be that of a center meaning the orbits near the origin will resemble a center what about this point and this point so the instead of uh, doing this by hand let us go to the computer and do it uh, on the pc so let me run the initial script that we have in every program and it takes a while to load initially that's okay So let me define a as np dot array. Let me create the matrix, and this will be zero comma one minus three times y squared, and this will be minus one comma minus two times y. Let me define x equal to zero, y and y equal to zero. And when a is this, let me then get l comma v equal to np dot lin alg dot ig of a. Let me then print l. And let me also print v. So let me run this. Okay. So for the case x equal to 0, y equal to 0, the eigenvalues are plus i and minus i. And that's quite obvious eigenvectors don't really matter in this case because it's a center now let me change the x and y coordinates to minus one comma one so at this particular point the eigenvectors are 0 0.73 and minus 2.73 so the stable manifold is strongly attracting than the unstable one okay and the direction of the unstable manifold is along this so plus one and minus this so something like this okay so this is the unstable manifold and the stable manifold is along this direction so it's more like this 
oh, sorry it has to be something like this okay so this is the stable manifold and this is the unstable manifold what about x equal to minus 1 and y equal to minus 1 so the eigenvalues are the reverse so this minus 0 0.73 and 2.73 and obviously the eigen direction will also be a mirror image of this okay so it will be something like this and something like this okay so the key point to note over here is the eigenvalues are simply flipping their signs and the direction as well okay and so this is what we get from linearization and we recall from the one of the examples earlier that centers are not really something which are quite robust geometrically meaning linearization of this particular equation is sort of dropping the influence of this cubic term it's dropping the influence of this quadratic term but mm, in the case of time reversible systems that is in this particular set of equations if we make the following change if we let t go as minus t right and in this particular case y go as minus y what do we have so in this particular case let us see what the equation transforms to the first equation is minus dx dt because we have made this particular transformation this will be minus y plus y cube and so this minus sign cancels out and we get the same equation okay i've flipped over the signs of y as well similarly for this equation dy dt the sign will remain unchanged because there's a change in sign of this and a change in sign of this simultaneously so this sign remains unaltered this is minus x minus y square. So the equations are unaltered under this kind of time reversal symmetry. And this symmetry implies that the problem, if a trajectory goes like this in the lower half, that is, if time is increasing, if the trajectory goes like this, in the upper half, as time in, uh, reduces, as time reverses, the trajectory must go something like this. And the presence of this time reversal in, implies that this particular center that we do not know whether it is robust or not will actually turn out to be a robust center okay so center is robust in the presence of time reversal symmetries and let me just tell this much that all this is much beyond the scope of this particular course but i want to throw out some key ideas of nonlinear dynamics obviously i'll link some useful videos in which the theory and the mathematics behind this will be discussed in greater details but i hope through this you get an appreciation of how you can actually make an in-depth study with the help of python or gnu octet okay so this is what we expect okay a trajectory like this a trajectory like this this implies time symmetry so now let us go ahead and plot this particular phase diagram so let us go over here and change this particular function in fact i don't want to plot trajectories on this i'll let you do that let me oops yeah so let me quickly wrap everything as a normal code um we'll show the quiver plot and we'll get rid of the trajectories and we'll directly plot the streamlines okay so let me just fix this this has to be y minus y cubed this has to be minus x minus y squared okay and 
So let me just run this and show what happens. Okay, so over here we do expect an orbit somewhere over here, and there does appear to be an attracting point, then points which fly over to minus infinity, points which fly over to infinity. So looking at the vector plot, it does appear. I mean, one can sort of gauge what is happening uh, in this flow field. Uh, let us plot the streamlines to really drive home the message. So let me take one hundred uh, points. I'm reusing the code. I'll not plot the vectors anymore because in the streamline plot, <clears throat> the vectors will be apparent as it is. So let me remove this quiver plot and let me do plt dot in fact let me copy the snippet from one of the earlier codes we don't have to rewrite everything so let me run this okay there's an error so x1 is not defined okay so this has to be x y u and v all right so what do we see this is the direction of the stable manifold okay, let me take this diagram to our notebook so we can discuss it okay so we had predicted that minus one comma minus one is one fixed point minus one comma one is the other fixed point there appears to be a trajectory which would join it like this and there appears to be a trajectory which would go around like this okay so what you can do is later on use this use this neighborhood as an initial condition see how the trajectory goes so this is the direction of the stable manifold this is the direction of the stable manifold so this entire thing okay is stable this is the direction of the unstable manifold this is the direction of the unstable manifold and This is the direction of the stable manifold. Okay, so we have already predicted these, and there are fixed orbits over here. There are fixed orbits over here, and because of the time symmetry, whatever we have predicted through linearization still holds true. There's no issue going on. Okay, so this uh, this whole plot sort of looks like a manta ray if you squint or you squint your eyes hard enough and uh, yeah so this uh, particular problem uh, highlights an important aspect that of time reversal symmetry and i hope you can learn more on that in one of the later uh, one of the links that i've provided below let us revisit a very popular example taught in grade school that of a simple pendulum So simple pendulum is described in terms of theta double dot plus sine theta is equal to zero. Well, obviously this is a very, I mean, simplified form of it. It's a dimensionless form of it. So let us write the, the following. Let me first of all represent theta as x. So x double dot plus sine x equal to zero. Let x dot is equal to y and y dot will be equal to minus sin x okay so this is the system that we're dealing with and yeah let us have a look at how this face place uh, looks like okay and this is quite simple this is simply going to be y and this is simply going to be minus sin x let us plot this okay 
let me increase the span in the x-axis let me make it from minus 6 to 6 so look at this what do you see and what do you interpret from this particular diagram let me take this to the notebook so the equation was x dot is equal to y and y dot is equal to sine x so quite naturally this is the x-axis and the fixed points correspond to y equal to 0 and x equal to n pi okay so this is 0 comma 0 or obviously for n equal to 0 this is the point this is equal to pi or minus pi this is equal to plus pi so all these are sort of the fixed points of the system and it's obviously infinitely periodic in the x direction now what about the jacobian so the jacobian for the system is given by 0 1 cos x and this will be 0 so at the origin so the ah, this is minus sine x yeah so this is a minus sine x i made a sign mistake so this has to be minus cos x so at origin the jacobian is equal to 0 1 minus 1 0 this obviously represents a center now do we have time reversal symmetry and let us see let us do this transform so obviously this will be minus x dot this will be minus y so this reduces to the same equation this is the first equation over here and the second equation y dot will be unchanged because y and t both have a sign reversal and minus sin x remains the same so the equations are unaltered because of this time reversal symmetry as a result of which the center that we predict at the origin is a stable center or i mean not a stable center but it's a robust center okay so it's a robust center and this causes the streamlines to go like this and obviously this will repeat after every 2 pi and the repeating is because of this particular cost function it is periodic after a time period 2 pi all right that's fine what about these points they don't appear to be centers so what are they so let us substitute n pi over here so let us substitute only pi over here so the jacobian over at uh, pi comma zero that will be 0 1 minus cos x 0 and this is equal to this so obviously it has two eigenvectors eigenvalues both of them are real it is plus minus 1 so this represents the unstable manifold this represents the stable manifold okay trajectories are attracted towards this along this particular trajectory they are attracted towards this fixed point along this trajectory now this trajectory is also an unstable so for this particular point this is an unstable manifold but that same manifold is a stable manifold for this particular point so this particular trajectory which connects two fixed points okay so in this example two fixed points are being connected by the by a trajectory and hence it is called as a heteroclinic trajectory and obviously these points are saddle points okay and it's a saddle point because one of the eigenvalues is positive and one of them is negative both are real similarly between these two points there was a trajectory which connected it like this so this is also a hydroclinic trajectory and this is also a hydroclinic trajectory it connects these two fixed points okay so now in reality whatever is going on 
uh, it's supposed to be peri- infinitely periodic so the uh, practical aspect is the phase space must be some something on a cylinder okay so the phase space must be something on a cylinder so what how can we plot it so on a you can imagine that you wrap this uh, phase portrait on a cylinder that is you take a periodic part you take one period out of it and you wrap it around the cylinder so how do you wrap it along a cylinder so let this be theta equal to 0 this is the z axis okay so or i mean you can yeah let this be theta equal to 0 so this point over here you're going forward in theta and this point you're going backward in theta so this point could be pi and this point could be minus pi as well so the mm, pi and minus pi points are sort of connected through a cylinder on the z axis we can plot the energy why do we say that we can plot the energy okay and the reason is this particular system is a conservative system so by conservative system we mean that the energy along a trajectory is going to be conserved so what is this let us multiply everything by theta dot so this is theta dot theta double dot plus theta dot sin theta is equal to 0 so this is half theta dot square its dot and this is cos theta's dot this is equal to 0 essentially it means ddt of half theta dot square plus cos theta is equal to 0 this is what it means the energy so this is this represents the energy of uh, of the system and if this is 0 it implies that theta dot square by 2 plus cos theta is constant so if i choose an initial condition that is if theta dot at t equal to 0 and theta equal at t equal to 0 if they are fixed then the evolution of the trajectory will be constrained along iso e lines that is what a conservative system means that is once i choose an initial condition over here it will move along a trajectory so that as the x and as the y are changing the energy along a trajectory it remains conserved okay the energy along this it will remain conserved so if you add some energy to the system you get jump you get boosted to a different trajectory and then you have a different behavior and the behavior changes fundamentally as we cross the heteroclinic trajectory so this is the heteroclinic trajectory where it's trying to make this uh, closed loop but once you have enough energy to cross it you simply loop over everything you don't sort of uh, have a have a situation where you have zero velocity because you are always traveling along non zero velocities here there are points where you are crossing zero velocity so in that case let us try to represent uh, whatever this is in a 3d diagram so let us copy the appropriate snippet we had written out the snippet in the previous uh, lecture so let me copy this okay so we have this we have a t span let me just if let it be 20 no problem so now let me change the system the system is x dot is equal to this and this is minus sin x okay and the energy will be half the expression for energy is half y square plus i think okay we have made a sign mistake because there will be a negative sign over here this is a negative sign over here it's a small oversight on my part but regardless the, the discussion does not change 
we can simply correct it over in the code so this will be minus np dot cos of x out okay so what do we need to plot let me grab hold of the maya command have we imported maya yes we have imported maya v so we will plot so we want to plot this cylinder so the cylinder is actually what it's gonna be it's a unit cylinder but what are the coordinates of the cylinder okay so y it does not play any role in this axis instead of y we are simply plotting this and we are plotting plotting it for different energy levels okay as energy levels change we should see a different in trajectory so this will be simply so if the radius of the cylinder is one so the x y coordinate for this particular cylinder so the x y coordinate will be simply cos theta and sin theta so let me do this so this will be np dot cos of x out this will be np dot sin of x out and on the z axis we'll have the energy and let me remove the color for now because we don't know the bounds for energy at this particular point in time so let me remove the bound in fact in order to wrap this uh, particular uh, face portrait uh, we should wrap it in such a way that the y axis now becomes the z axis so when we roll this if you imagine rolling this on the surface of a cylinder uh, this should not be the energy but yeah, this should be simply the velocity y so we can easily fix this not an issue this will be y out so let me run this let us see what happens okay so okay so we have something which looks like this so what is this in fact uh, in order to make it completely symmetric let me change this from minus 2.5 to 2.5 so we should have something interesting okay so look at this look at this structure we have essentially taken a periodic segment of this particular curve uh, this particular face portrait and we have wrapped it around a cylinder that is you are joining this edge with this edge so this this i if you want to call it corresponds to this point this is the i okay here is the i and as we go towards higher energy orbit so each of the ring corresponds to a separate energy level okay so as we go towards higher energy levels the velocity is not going to zero in fact it is just making a round on top of the cylinder this is these are the same energy levels but with an initial condition which is below the x axis now look at this trajectory in particular let me increase the number of points so that we can have a clearer interpretation it will take a while to run okay so these closed orbits correspond to the the orbits which are bounded by the heteroclinic trajectories so whatever so this heteroclinic trajectory will correspond to that trajectory which sort of just touches the back of this okay if you take even more points you will have a trajectory so this point over here is sort of corresponding to this point over here and this point over here is corresponding to this point over here okay so though this is the center this is that particular center over here okay so i hope you can appreciate how you can wrap things around in 3d 
and get a deeper understanding of how things look. In fact, you can change the color scheme. We have discussed on how to change the uh, the color of this particular trajectory in Maya V, and hopefully you can make that change and plot this in a more colorful manner. And so the color will correspond primarily to, to the energy of the system. We can convert this conservative system into a non-conservative system by means of adding a certain damping to this entire system. Okay, so the equation for a damped oscillator will be theta double dot plus b theta dot plus sine theta is equal to zero. And so over here we will simply have another term minus b times y. Okay, so it's not that difficult to implement really. It's simply a matter of say b is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 times y. Let us see how the trajectories look like. Mm, 0 0.1 is not a very strong. Okay, let me actually do this. Let me take 30 points. Let me plot this and let me make let me wrap this inside an interactive function. So def show 2D phase b equal to say so 0.1. Let us wrap all of this inside the function. So w equal to interactive show 2D phase comma b. It will go from say 0 to 1 in steps of 0 0.05 and then we will display the widget and let's see when we increase the damping huh. oh okay so <laughs> this has to be minus b okay. So what what do you observe? So by changing uh, or by introducing damping, the first thing that we observe is that the center is no longer uh, a closed orbit. I mean, there are no closed orbits near the center. So the origin is no longer a center. The origin becomes a spiral and it spirals inwards. And the physical meaning of a trajectory spiraling inwards into the origin is that the velocity is reducing continually while rotating. So the pendulum is still oscillating, but the velocity is going zero and it is stopping at theta equal to zero. So this is the meaning of that incoming spiral. Okay, there are trajectories, if they have enough energies, they are sort of avoiding this particular, um, this particular spiral, but eventually they will be trapped by some other spiral. Okay, let me increase the damping further. You will see that even trajectories which had larger energy, they are attracted towards this. And really, a trajectory being attracted by another spiral, so the spiral on this part. Uh, let me show you that spiral. In fact, let me increase the range of this. Okay, so when B is zero, these are all individual centers. Okay. So each of this point is a center, but as damping increases, so the trajectory which is starting over here, it goes like this, and eventually it spirals on into this. Trajectory which has started somewhere over here, maybe it will meander above these centers and go to this. But really speaking, this entire system is uh, sort of periodic. And when you wrap around, you simply realize that it's actually coming down to the same center and it's quite obvious because the pendulum only has this much to play with there's not a whole lot of centers okay so even if you have larger energy it will whirl around and then eventually come back to orbit so this is what those things represent so try to interpret these equations on your own you have all the tools. In fact, in order to interpret all of this, 
what you can also do is you can plot the time series as well okay so let me get rid of this stream plot for now let me only show plot ah so this is let me copy this in order to show the time series let me get this back to how it was okay so over here let me add a small damping so this has added damping instead of making the 3d plot and instead of choosing different y naughts say y naught is 2.4 let me wrap let me indent this back and let us plot t out x out t out y out and let us see what what it looks like okay so this is how the time series looks like so this is how you can plot the time series as well let us move on to the next example that of limit cycles moving on to fixed uh, limit cycles so let me write down a vector flow. It is given by r dot is equal to r times 1 minus r square and theta dot equal to 1. So the meaning of theta dot equal to 1 is that in the polar coordinate, something is constantly changing. Not something, but the quantity is the quantity theta is linearly increasing in time okay and what about this so these two equations are linearly decoupled meaning r dot is only a function of r albeit non-linearly while theta dot is constant which is to say it's a function of theta only because of this we can sort of um, use some of the tricks that we had learned in one dimensional flows so when r dot is something like this let me just quickly plot it for you okay so it looks something like this and we are interested in a small region so let me just take 0 to 1 uh, maybe slightly more mm. yeah so it obviously has a fixed point at r equal to 0 and a fixed point at r equal to plus minus 1 but in this case because it's a polar coordinate system the fixed point will be at r equal to 1 okay so it goes something like this this fixed point is unstable because r dot is positive so the flow on a vector uh, on a line it will head towards the right while the flow over here is something like this so this is a stable fixed point but now if it were to be only r dot equal to r okay then what would happen is r dot would exponentially grow and reach a certain value or it would blow away to infinity but this particular term gives you a sort of feedback so if as long as r is less than one this r dot is some r times a positive number that means that r is going to grow it's gonna head along this line but when um, r is greater than one this particular term becomes negative so you have r dot equal to r times a negative number which means that the trajectories are going to head towards the left okay so this is r equal to one so this means that it's always trying to non-linearly hunt for the value of r equal to one and as to how that manifests itself in the xy plane remains to be seen so it is obvious that in an xy plane r is equal to square root of x square plus y square and theta is tan inverse y by x okay so alternately x equal to r cos theta and y equal to r sin theta so this is just a simple transformation between the cylindrical coordinate system and uh, or a polar coordinate system and a cartesian coordinate system so let us try to visualize 
how this flow looks like so let me just grab a snippet from here and let me so we have a differential equation in rn theta what what we'll do is we'll solve it in rn theta and then cast it in a cartesian form okay so instead of x let me call this r let me write down the appropriate equations okay so once i have changed it to this um, this will no longer be x out but this will be r out and this will be theta out and we can then we, we can remove this energy we don't need it now the r out can be converted to x out as r out times np dot cos of theta out and y out can be written as r out times np dot sin of theta out and then finally we'll plot the trajectory and that will be x out not the trajectory but yeah so trajectory in the phase space so it will be x out comma y out so <clears throat> well before even that the entire r equal to one circle is like a fixed uh, contour so let me plot that and you can do the jacobian analysis but i'm gonna skip over that you can try it on your own so let me plot this particular contour uh, let me get rid of this weird line okay so x naught and y naught uh, okay so these have to be recast in the r and theta terms so if x naught and y naught are specified we can say r naught is equal to n or simply x naught square plus y naught square this whole thing raised to 0.5 and theta naught it will be 8 tan 2 rather np dot 8 and 2 and this will be y naught comma x naught okay so we have declared what the corresponding r and theta will be because we are specifying the initial condition in terms of the cartesian point x naught y naught okay so let, let me run this there appears to be an error Ah, sorry so this is not a tan 2 but this is arc tan 2 okay mm. once again this has to be r naught and this has to be t naught okay, we have to pass the initial conditions appropriately okay so when we do this we do get a, a closed contour or that is a fixed uh, i mean a closed orbit so let me just set the aspect ratio of this all right so this is that particular fixed orbit now let us see what happens when i choose a contour which is slightly beyond y equal to one that is we choose this then what happens let us see so let me increase the value to 1.2 okay so we see that the contour starts over here and it is sort of spiraling in into that radius r equal to 1 let me now choose something which is less than uh, 1 so let me make it 0 0.8 so it starts over here and it spirals onto a circle again so what do we observe we observe the following phenomenon so we have a closed contour like this if we start at a point outside this it sort of uh, homes in onto this closed contour if we start at an inner point it also homes on to this so this kind of an orbit is called as a limit cycle and a limit cycle is an isolated closed trajectory because it's called an isolated closed trajectory because it is to distinguish between a limit cycle and a circle or uh, a center so a center will have a structure something like this okay you will have a series of closed orbits but in the case of limit cycle there will be exactly one closed orbit and the other orbits are sort of 
homing on to that uh, particular orbit. It's not like you have a series of fixed orbits. Okay, you will have one cycle which is locked and all the other cycles will be sort of trying to reach that particular point. So now let us draw a bunch of trajectories. Okay, so how do we do a bunch of trajectories? We can simply wrap this entire thing inside a double for loop. So for x naught in what do we have? Mm, minus one in p dot line space minus 1.5 to 1.5 let's take um, 15 points for y naught in n p dot in space minus 1.5 to 1.5 let's take 15 points let me indent this further because we have a nested for loop okay so let me run this let us see all the different trajectories oops ah we have to remove these two lines because even though we are declaring them separately, I'm resetting them to x0 and y0. So we have to remove this. Let me comment it for now. Let me not. Okay. So, all right, great. So this face portrait clearly highlights what the nature of the limit cycle is. The limit cycle is like a closed orbit which is attracting all the orbits towards itself. And it is also called as an isolated closed trajectory. And it has a certain property that it is sort of periodic in nature. But at the same time, it is self-regulating. Meaning, if you push the system outside the limit cycle, it will again attract it back to the limit cycle. If you push it below the limit cycle, it will again rise and go towards the limit cycle. Okay. And, and that is the reason why it's called as a limit cycle. For long times, it tends to go towards that particular closed trajectory. Okay, so think about it. I'm not going to go into great details, but hopefully this will give you enough food for thought. Before proceeding, I also want to give you an idea how the time series also looks like. So in order to plot the time series let us make two subplots i think this is the first time we are making subplots so fig comma x equal to plt dot subplots and this will be two rows and one column because i want to plot this face portrait as a single subplot and the time series as another subplot okay so <clears throat> After this, we'll say x zero dot plot is this, and we don't need this anymore. This will be x zero dot set aspect one. Then we will have x one dot plot t out comma x out t out comma y out. Okay, so let me run this. Uh, There's an error. Ah, so this has to be passed as a tuple okay in fact because we are trying to plot the time series as well i'm going to get rid of this loop i'm going to introduce these two initial conditions back let me indent everything back so this is how the time series looks like okay it's starting at a lower point than one but it settles down to one let me make it a bit more severe so as to impress upon you how it approaches the limit cycle let me make it at point 2 so it starts at point 2 and immediately regulates itself back to the limit cycle okay so it goes back to the case where it is sort of shadowing the limit cycle which is simply going to be two waves one one is going to be a sine wave one is going to be a cos wave because a circle can be parameterized by cos theta and sine theta Okay, similarly, when we have a condition which is say y equal to 2, so it starts like this, then immediately it settles on to the limit cycle. So it's called a stable limit cycle because it's a limit cycle which attracts. Similarly, there can be unstable limit cycles as well. These are cycles which repel. So if you have a limit cycle like this, okay, it will cause trajectories which are pushed away from the limit cycle to go away to a fixed point somewhere inside. 
or if you have a trajectory outside it will it will try to go away from this okay there can also be limit cycles which are i mean partially attracting i guess the inner orbits it will attract towards the limit cycle whereas the outer orbits it will repel away from the limit cycle or even vice versa okay so this is how the time series looks like you can have multiple plots like this it's a very easy technique okay so now limit cycles need not always necessarily be uh, something which resembles a circle okay uh, the most famous example of this is the van der poel oscillator so let me grab hold of um in fact let me find out a snippet which will be most useful for us i think this snippet is going to be most useful for us it's from one of the earlier lectures so yeah so it this particular snippet contains both a quiver plot that is a vector plot and it contains a trajectory as well and this will help us in clearly understanding what the nature of the flow is and the trajectory as that vector field is carrying it through so the van der poel oscillator is described by an equation x dot plus mu times x square minus 1 times x dot plus x equal to 0 so you can <clears throat> imagine this to be a simple harmonic oscillator yes but with a non linear damping term so this particular term if this x square minus 1 were to be not there this would be a damping term it would be a linear damping term but the x square minus 1 this particular thing gives rise to that self regulatory behavior of this particular cycle meaning if x is less than 1 then this term is going to be positive uh, this go, this term is going to be negative that means the this particular damping term is not actually going to be a damping term but it's going to push the cycle it's going to give some energy to the cycle whereas if x is greater than 1 okay so this term becomes positive and this will act like a damping term okay so the presence of that particular nonlinearity is responsible for um, eventually what we'll see as a limit cycle but limit cycles are present only because of this kind of a uh, feedback nonlinearity if if you have a linear system it will not occur linear systems cannot have uh, such kinds of limit cycles so let us encode this particular flow so this should be x double dot okay so um, the flow will be quite simple x dot equal times x1 okay so the time span is this and yeah so the initial condition is something like okay so let me run this and see what happens okay so for a equal to 0 obviously this behaves like a simple harmonic oscillator and it's a closed orbit it's a non isolated closed orbit but when a increases okay so we, the flow was indeed correct i just increased the axis of the problem so forget about this because at the origin uh, there's some zero going on mm, let me change the number of points by one to avoid the origin okay so when a becomes something like this you see that the initial point which is somewhere over here it is going in a loop and it is settling on to this particular a uh, diamond shaped orbit okay in fact let me allow a to have even larger values okay so let me rerun this okay so this is how the flow looks like so even if i change the initial condition it appears to always settle down onto that closed orbit okay let me increase the number of points over here okay so we have not yet specified the relative tolerance in this so it should be 1 e minus 6 or 1 e minus 
just for good measure okay so this is how the fixed orbit or the limit cycle looks like it starts at a point it eventually homes on to this rhombus looking shape and even if i change the initial condition it, it will always do that okay that fixed cycle is not going to change and it looks jagged because i have taken very few sampling points in the plot let me take 200 it should immediately be smoother okay there you go so now even if i change x so that it is lying outside um, the limit cycle it is homing onto the limit cycle okay so even this van der Poel oscillator because of this non-linear damping effect it is always going to home on to this limit cycle so to learn more on the theory of limit cycles i suggest you look at some of the links below uh, some of those lectures are by professor strogatz and uh, yeah he explains them in a very easy fashion but with the help of these tools that you have learned you can easily implement many of the things which is showing in class on your own and once you start doing these things on your own you can really plot a lot of things you can really visually understand because this topic of nonlinear dynamics is all about having a visual interpretation having a deep visual interpretation of what is going on okay so now let us uh, also plot the trajectories okay i want to show you how the trajectories also look like so in fact let me just go ahead and do t out comma x out t out comma y out ah, you have to suppress the quiver plot you have to suppress this okay so okay so where for a equal to zero it's a simple harmonic oscillator and a increases look at how the waveforms change so it is quantified by a slow or a it has two time scales what i'm trying to get at okay it has one fast time scale a slow time scale then a fast time scale and a fast decay then a slow decay then a fast decay similarly fast rise slow decay fast fall slow increase fast increase slow decrease fast decrease and so on so it's a problem which is mm, sort of quantified by the presence of multiple time scales and all this when you start doing it analytically falls within the ambit of uh, multiple time scale perturbation theory it's something which i teach in a different course but in in view of a shortage of time we're going to skip that in this particular lectures okay so this is how you can visualize the time series as well okay so now lastly we move on to a very famous reaction and it was shown that this particular set of reactions can be reduced um, to two nonlinear equations so the name of the uh, the name of the reaction is glycolysis so glycolysis is is the reaction in which sugar molecule is converted into energy and it is one of the most fundamental um, energy producing cycle it's a incredibly complex cycle consisting of many sub cycles and all that but all said and done it does boil down to something which can be sort of mathematically modeled as two coupled nonlinear equations so let me write down the form of the equations so x dot is going to be minus x plus a y plus x square y and y dot is going to be b minus a y minus x square y where x represents the concentration or the evolution of atp and y represents the evolution of adp okay so the evolution of these two molecules is what sort of governs the entire uh, chemical set of chemical reactions behind glycolysis and let us try to analyze these two governing equations so first of all what is the fixed point mm, so the fixed point can be found out as follows so x dot will be zero and y dot will be zero so zero is this zero is this so let us add these two equations so you obtain minus x plus b equal to zero for the fixed point and 
consequently you obtain x star equal to b whereas for the y so if this is true then using this we can obtain y is equal to b upon a plus b square it is just rearranging this and getting this so y star is this x star is this so you can go ahead and find out the nature of this particular fixed point by finding out the jacobian i'm not going to do it i'm just going to show you how the flow looks like and how we can easily view by changing the values of a and b what the nature of the fixed point is going to be like okay so with with the fixed point out of the way let us grab hold of a in fact this is fine for our purpose so let me paste it over here and let me now change the various values so obviously the flows have to change the vector flow in the phase space is given by this plus a times y my uh, plus x square times y okay so this is how the the time series looks like but we are not i mean we have we should plot the time series as well but why not we plot the phase space as well so let me do that so fig comma a x equal to plt dot subplots 2 comma 1 and a x not uh, rather a x 0 will let us make the the flow so let us copy this so the first axis will contain the quiver plot and we will set it to the aspect ratio to one then on the next plot we'll plot the time series on the same plot we will also plot the x out and y out the trajectory of the particle which starts at the specified initial condition okay so just a quick overview of what is going on we have made a widget which calls this function with the initial values x naught and y naught x naught and y naught will be passed on to the function and we will first plot the quiver plot after we plot the quiver plot we will solve the initial value problem with the specified initial condition and the parameters are pro, uh, passed on by the widget so once we solve this we'll plot on top of it how the trajectory in that phase portrait also looks like so what we see over here is the quiver plot in fact this is perhaps a bit too big mm, let me make it 10 by 5 okay yeah. so this is the quiver plot of the entire uh, process let me go ahead and plot the initial point on top of this so it will be x0 dot plot mm, x naught comma y naught and let me plot it as a field marker in fact let us also plot the fixed point in this particular figure so a x zero dot plot so the fixed point is b comma b by a plus b square so b comma b by a plus b square and let me mark it by a square a red square okay let me run this okay so see what happens when i choose 
suppose I choose a value of a to be 0.4 now let us see what happens when the value of b is changed okay so now when b is 0 the red square that is the fixed point it is attracting okay the trajectory heads towards so it, the time series also show that it is decaying towards certain value let me increase the time span by two times so that it will be clear so let me make a as 0.6 and let me make b to be zero so they're approaching the fixed point so when b is zero everything is a fixed point let me increase b slowly when b is 0.1 also you have a fixed point but when b is 0 0.02 it's also a fixed point okay it's going towards that value now when b increases further you see that something weird begins to happen okay so now it's also it's still a fixed point but now suddenly you have the self-sustaining oscillations okay so it has gone into a fixed it has gone to a stable oscillation and it's a limit cycle so the orbit around the fixed point is not attracting the point all the way to the center but it has it is now behaving like a limit cycle okay this keeps on going on the limit cycle in fact grows in size so when a limit cycle grows in size it means that the concentrations of atp and adp are oscillating across a wide range of values but regardless of that they do have a definitive uh, oscillatory behavior as seen from both the face portrait and from the time series when it further increases now look what happens it's going it's going it's still fixed it's still a fixed point it's still a fixed point it's still a fixed point uh, it's obviously a fixed point it's still a limit cycle but now at after a certain value it no longer is able to sustain that and it becomes as attracting orbit again so now for higher values of b the red square is no longer the center of a limit cycle but it becomes and a stable attracting point okay and a similar behavior can be done for different values of a as well so we can set the x-axis limits as shown with the help of this we can focus on one particular area we can now change the value of a and b and visualize how the limit cycle actually looks like the corresponding time series is also shown on the right subfigure. It's quite interesting to see the transition from being a stable point to a stable limit cycle. And you can do this for various initial conditions as well. And they wrap around several times before homing in to the limit cycle. So with this we wrap up this particular set of lectures in which we have looked at various properties of nonlinear phase diagrams uh, including saddle nodes, attractors, repellers, centers, degenerate stars and lastly limit cycles. In the next lecture we are going to look at how we can analyze bifurcations in two dimensions and it will draw heavily on the bifurcations in one dimensional nonlinear problems. So, with this, I take leave. I'll see you again next time.